Okay, so here we are on the sixth chapter of this book. And for this chapter, we're going to spend three sections on studying a subject called multilinear algebra. And now for the rest of the section for this chapter, we're going to combine with our knowledge from chapter two of differentiations. And then we're going to study a something called differential forms and their operators. So let's just start with multilinear algebra. It's going to be easy, so just bear with me, all right? For here's the definition. We have a vector space, and then we have a Cartesian product. And we have a function defined on the set to real number. We said this function is linear in the ith coordinate if we fix all the vj that is not equal to i, and the function t be such that tv is equal to f, so the other ones are fixed, and the only variable is this one, the ith variable. And if tv is a linear function, then we say that this linear in the ith variable. So if it's a multilinear function, then it's linear in all the ith variable. And for such function, multilinear function, we call it a k tensor, or a tensor of order k. And we let this to be denote the set of all k tensor on v. So if k equal to 1, it is just the dual space. Well, now we define addition and multiplication and scalar multiplication. If we define the addition to be this, and we define the scalar multiplication to be like this, then it is easy to see that this is a vector space, with the zero tensor being the zero map. Okay. And now we have a lemma. This is that 26.2. Where is 26.1? Oh, I skipped it. Yeah. Okay, 26.2 is like. So, what it says that if we have a given the basis for V and FG, K tensors, and if they agree on every K tuple of integers from the set. So they, if they agree on every k-tuple of basis elements, then they agree on all the values, right? And note that there's no requirement that they must be distinct or arranged in particular order. They just arbitrary any k numbers from one n. So the summary is that if they agree on k-tuple of basis, then they agree on vk. So here's the proof. So if we're given arbitrary k tuple, each of them we can write it then as a linear combination, as a linear combination of the basis. So v i is written by c i j a j, where j from one n. Now we calculate this because it's multilinear, right? We can do this because they're multilinear, and we do it even further. Right, we do it in further. So here we have we just substitute v one to this, and because they're multilinear, we can pull up the addition. And for this one, each of them can be a, again right. We make it out loud, and then again at the very end, you'll get something a summation form like this. Well, because f and g are greater bases, we can replace f and g. So we have f equal to g, right? And here's the third theorem, a lemma. So <coughs> the lemma is that we have a vector space and we give a basis and we let i be a k-tuple and there's a unique k-tensor on v such that for every k-tuple we have the value is equal to zero if the type are different, and it's equal to one if the type the tuples are all the same. Then the set of all such tensors form a basis for this vector space. Okay, so here's a summary. So given this, there exists a unique k tensor such that for any j, we have this is equal to zero if i is not equal to j one, and this forms a basis of this vector space. And all such tensors are called elementary k tensors on V, 
corresponding to this given basis. And we know that the dimension of this space is the dimension of the, this given vector space to the power of k. <laughs> so, in the case where k equals 1, then they're just the basis for the dual space, right? <laughs> and here's the proof. The uniqueness follows by the last lemma. We just, we just proved the lemma. If they agree on the basis, then they're the same. The uniqueness is already done. And for the existence, so first we consider k equal to 1, and we're given like the dual basis. Or the elementary dual map. Oh, elementary linear functionals, I think. Yeah, they're called linear functionals. Okay, so if k is greater than 1, we define, so we're given i tuple, so the corresponding elementary k tensor with arbitrary k value, k, tup k tuple, and this value is defined to be equal to the product of, so we have i, right? So they're like the, they're like the i tuples. Each i1 is going to v1, i2 is evaluated at v2 until ik is evaluated at vk so first first we know that each each of them are linear right and we know the multiplication is distributive it's real number right then we have this is multilinear so it is a k tensor and again the requires value are satisfied and you guys can just calculate like really fast. It's really easy. But what we want is still we have to show that they form a basis. So what it means that so we're given f, right? We want to show that f can be written as a unique linear combination of all elementary tensors, k tensors. So we're given f. And for each i K tuple, we define di a scalar to be equal to f evaluated at. So here's the i tuple, and a are all the basis elements. Okay, so we're given a function, and then we define this this scalar, and then we define g to be the sum of k tuples. So obviously, it's a k tensor. K tensor. So, then we know that g evaluated at this is equal to di. Right? And di by definition is equal to this. So we apply a lemma because they agree on the basis. So they agree on everything. So the existence of the linear combination is proven. And we want to show that it's unique. So suppose there's another one, there's another linear combination. So there's a random other scalars. Then we know that this is equal to d prime i because we have our phi j here and d prime i because g prime is equal to f right so this equal to this but this is equal to d i this d i right so these two are the same which means that the linear representation is unique so here's a number. So followed by this theorem, if we define if we define scalars for each i, and then with the basis, then there is a k tensor f such that it takes this value on each i, right? We just define g to be this. Then then g that this g is the f we want. So a k tensor can be defined specifying its value on the tuples of basis. All right. And here we are, moving on to the next definition, which is called tensor product. So if F is a K tensor, G is a L tensor, we define their tensor product is a K plus L tensor, such that, so if you're taking K plus L elements, this is to defined to be equal to F times the first K value and G on the rest L tuple. And this is a tensor product of F and G. And it's easy to see that they are indeed 
uh, K plus L tensor because each of them is K and L tensor. So it's easy to sh show that. And here we move on. So given a linear map, we define the pullback or the dual transformation. So we call this the pullback or the dual transformation. Uh, let me just check what is it called on the textbook. It is called... Oh wait, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Just something... Okay, so... So with this tensor product being defined, here is a lemma that talks about the properties. So the pro here is the properties of the tensor product. So the associative, homogeneity, and distributive. And then we have this formula. You can take you can pause the video and take a look. And the proof is really trivial, so I skipped it. So that's the reason why I forget about it. Okay, so let's keep going. We define the dual transformation or the pullback so that T is a linear function on V to W and we define the dual transformation is a K it, it takes a K tensor on W and mapped to a K tensor on V so what it means that so for F is a W K tensor on W and we have a K tuple with an element from VK then T star F taken this is defined to be this okay so this will take the value of f and this function you taking v is defined to be f of, of tv1 to tvk and this is indeed a k tensor because t is linear right and f is multi-linear so you can split them out so this is indeed a k tensor on v all right so here is a theorem about this. Here is a theorem. So here are three properties. T is a linear transformation, so there's a pullback. And first, this is linear. And second, we have this property. And third, we have this property. And the proof is kind of trivial. So I just proved the first one, is if it's linear. So T start of AF plus BG of this, which is by definition, and then which is by definition we split it and this again by definition right and then again well by definition right the second one is trivial and the third one is that so we have t from v to w s from w to x right then t star is from here to here s star is from here to here and s of t s of t when I show the s of t is equal to t star s star f so s of t star f from v right because this function takes v as a value right oops sorry okay let's just keep going there's a diagram is going to be useful so you take a v and it's equal to by definition this one right you just pull this in and this by definition and you pull this s out right by definition and t remains the same and again we pull t out right and the rest remains the same so here is a diagram that illustrates the third property so you have t from v to w right and s is from w to t so s of t is from v to x now this will pull back from k tensor we go back to k tensor on v right and we know that this is equal to t of s star of f s star is from so here we do this direction right we put the star here and again this direction we put a star again so so we have that s of t star is just t star of s star right this is just a diagram 
And this concludes this lecture. It's really short and easy. I'll see you tomorrow.